So I can tell you guys a little bit about what happened on this bus uh, back in, it was about 63 years ago, I think. Um, so Rosa Parks back then was a 42-year-old African-American seamstress living in Montgomery, Alabama during the era of what is known as racial segregation or Jim Crow. So the way that worked was like this. The front of the bus was for white people only. Only white people could sit up here. If you were not white, you were not allowed to even set foot in this section, let alone sit here. You had to sit this row back, which was called the colored section. So, uh, Rosa Parks was coming home from work. She got on the bus in the back door because the front door was for white people. She walked down the aisle and she sat right here, right across from where President Obama sat, although obviously Obama hadn't sat there yet. Um, <laughs> so Rosa Parks sitting here, the very first row of the uh, non-white section, and that's important because uh, the bus took off, it starts picking up some people, pretty soon the bus is getting full, and at about the third stop, a bunch of white people get on, and an additional rule comes into effect. And that rule is that when all of the 10 of the seats up here in the white section are full, the white section is actually extended back a row into the non-white section, and if you were not white, and you happen to be sitting here in the very first row of the non-white section, too bad for you, you had to give up your seat to the white passengers who just got on. So that's what exactly what happened with Rosa Parks. She was doing what was perfectly legal until the minute one additional white person got on the bus and then her continuing to sit here became illegal. And I will stress again, these laws were on the books. You would find this in writing. So, uh, the bus driver, who it was his job to enforce the law on the bus, and for that reason bus drivers commonly carried guns back then, the bus driver said to the people in this row to clear out and give up their seats. So the man sitting next to Rosa Parks and the two women sitting across from her did give up their seats, and they did the expected, ordinary, and legal thing to do, which was to give up your seat. Rosa Parks, however, uh, did not do the expected thing. Like on all previous days when she rode, rode this bus, she had done the expected thing, but this time she refused to move. So the bus driver asked her, are you going to move, ma'am? She said no. The bus driver said, I'm going to have to call the police then, because again, this was in violation of the law. So there's a few reasons why Rosa Parks was violating the law, why she was refusing to move. Uh, of course, she was tired after a hard day at work. She didn't want to give up her seat. She wanted to relax. But there's a more profound reason, too, and that is she was performing an act of what we call civil disobedience. She was disobeying a law that she felt was morally wrong, that she felt was unjust. She dreamed of a day where where you could sit on a bus would not be determined by your skin color or your race. She was kind of following what the Declaration of Independence says when it says when we a law is wrong, we not only have a right, but we have a duty to disobey it. And Rosa Parks saw herself as performing her duty to disobey this law that she thought was morally wrong and to challenge the law so that we could bring us forward to a future where where you could sit on a bus would not be determined based on your skin color. So Rosa Parks was performing this act of civil disobedience. The bus driver got off the bus and went to call the police at a nearby movie theater. Because remember, no cell phones back then. So he called the police and a police officer showed up. The policeman got on the bus and the situation became that much more dangerous for Rosa because the police were well known for beating and attacking people who disobeyed the law back then, especially African Americans. A police officer walked right up to Rosa Parks and he said to her, now ma'am, if you don't move, I'm going to have to place you under arrest. And Rosa Parks, uh, without a hint of fear in her voice, uh, famously showing a lot of courage, she said, you may go and do so. She accepted the consequences of her actions and allowed herself to be arrested because she knew that it would send a stronger message. So she was arrested. She was brought to a nearby jail. She was bailed out by a local white civil rights attorney who also disagreed with these laws. And then afterwards, she went and had her trial where she was found guilty of uh, disorderly conduct. It was around this time that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. arrived in town, just getting his start as a civil rights leader. What really blows my mind about this is that he was only 26 years old at the time. I'm only 24, so I can't see myself leading a whole civil rights movement in just two years. 
but um, Martin Luther King Jr. arrived in town. He met with Rosa Parks and other civil rights leaders in town, and together they had the Montgomery Bus Boycotts where for 381 days all of the African Americans in town refused to ride the buses until the bus segregation laws were overturned. This was a big deal because, if you couldn't tell by the different uh, proportions of the sections, the majority of people riding the bus were African American, so the buses were losing a lot of money. Um, in addition, they were also fighting this in court, and eventually it got all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, where Chief Justice Earl Warren ruled that bus segregation in Montgomery, Alabama, not only was it illegal, but it violated the highest law of the land, the U.S. Constitution, and that it did not treat everyone equally. So this, uh, this landmark decision basically uh, ended the bus segregation, and the next time Rosa Parks got on this bus, which you can see in that picture over there, she sat in what had formerly been the whites only section right here. So uh, yes, that picture is from a year after the event when uh, the bus segregation had been finally overturned. But uh, this was one of the first big victories of the U.S. Civil Rights Movement, which ultimately got the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act passed later in the 1960s. But it all had started right here on this bus with a simple act of courage and defiance by an ordinary woman who came to be known as the mother of the Civil Rights Movement, Rosa Parks. And she sat right here.